Hello, my friends. Welcome to Breakfast with Sergio. I'm here in the studio of Amy Babelik. How are you, Amy? I'm doing good. Thank you. And today we're going to talk about what makes a great studio. All right, my friends, we're back here at Breakfast with Sergio, and I'm in the studio of Amy. Amy Babanek, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, and I'm doing a series right now with our friends here at Breakfast with Sergio on mm -hmm. what makes a good studio. Mm -hmm. So what a better way to do it than actually here in your own studio. So you are in Evanston here in Chicago That's area, right. Chicago, north, north side of Chicago area, mm -hmm. and uh, we are in your studio. We've been talking about your art yeah. and what, the things that you do. So uh, to get started, mm -hmm. very first question, what's your favorite breakfast? My favorite breakfast. breakfast of choice. <laughs> uh, that would be, I would say, pancakes oh, that my but... husband makes. Oh, so okay. I don't have to make them. They just <laughs> appear in front of me. <laughs> Very so good. That, that, would be, that would be my favorite. What do you put in the top? Uh, maple syrup. Yes. Yep. Just, maple okay. syrup. Just clean Traditional. It. Nice. Very cool. Yes. Awesome. Well, Amy, your studio is here at home. Yes. Which is kind of cool because we, we talked a little bit earlier about you know, the advantage of having a home studio. So right. what is it for you like to having your studio at home? Now, do you feel like you have uh, kind of a, what are, well, let's say, what are the advantages for you to have the studio at home? Because I know for some artists, you know, they might find it like they need to go out somewhere yes. to feel like they work in the studio. How is it yes. for you? Uh, well, I actually like both, both having the studio at home uh -huh. and actually, and having a studio outside. I think the advantages are, there's a few really amazing advantages. One of them uh -huh. is, it's always open, I can have dinner, yeah. I have, maybe I have an hour available, I can just come in here and work for a short time. Mm -hmm. um, the main advantage is that there's no separate rent to yeah. pay, Yeah. so it it's just tied up in, you know, whatever you're renting your house or mm -hmm. you're paying for your house. Mm -hmm. So there's no separate cost, right? And that's a big deal. Um, and I would say uh, just a third advantage is uh -huh. that you can always come in, look at your work, yeah, and kind of keep it in your mind, back of your mind right. when you're not actively working. So I can wander in here, I can put yeah. it out in my living space so that mm -hmm. I can constantly kind of have it cooking in the back of my mind. Right. Does it happen to you because the dining room is on the other side of the camera? <laughs> so does it it's happen, right there. Does it happen to you like sometimes you're like having dinner and then looking at your work like, hmm, it's yes. change this or that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or I have old work up like uh -huh. the painting over there and I'm looking at it like, that was a really good painting. That was six years ago. <laughs> I need to do more of those. So, so it's a good kind of reminder of old work too. So it kind of keeps you connected yes. with your practice. That's a great way to put it. And, mm -hmm. and working at it. Um, so, that, so I think there's, in this series, we're going to talk about you know that you know mm -hmm. how artists work mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i think there's an advantage of both yeah know? absolutely and i think it's about how to me i think it's about how it works best for you right right according to who you are your stage in life absolutely that, yes that, uh, i think uh, one thing that makes both kinds of studio okay for me is that yeah. i think of my practice as a job yeah. where I kind of put in my hours mm -hmm. and I can't let myself do other things while yeah. I'm in the studio. Right. So leaving to go to a studio outside of the home was really useful for me too because I yeah. felt like I was going to a job. The, like yeah. I'm outside of the home. And when I'm in here, um, I shut the doors. I make sure that I can't get to my email. I put my phone over there okay. where it's. I have to kind of tell myself, you know, I can't go do the laundry. Right. I'm so, in the so studio. So you have that work. mental barrier that exactly. you put yourself... Exactly. I'm at work. <laughs> That's good. I can't go take a nap. <laughs> now, awesome. Now, something I love about your studio is how beautiful uh, light you have because oh, you are surrounded yeah. by windows. Mm -hmm. And that is pretty neat. That is great. Yeah. How does light affect the way that you work? Um, well, I think one way it's affected it in, my, in this new studio that I have is that mm -hmm. I have so much light that That's it allows so nice. me to see the detail, the objects I'm painting mm -hmm. or drawing. Yeah. So uh, I can really get into seeing um, seeing clearly and also seeing the color mm -hmm. is also affecting me how I'm kind of collecting the the color um, and the patterns that I see in the objects mm -hmm. when I'm um, producing it on the drawing or the painting. Okay. Um, and another thing is that the time of day makes a difference. So right. I make some of these paintings and drawing during the day okay. at a certain time of day when the light's hitting it and getting particular shadows okay. that I can't replicate with artificial light. Got it. That makes yeah. a difference. Very cool. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your work. Since yeah. we're in your studio, let's learn a little bit about you sure. know, the things that you do. Yeah, absolutely. So my work is, uh, my practice is based on an archaeological project I've been uh -huh. doing for the last um, six or seven years. Okay. Where um, I'm particularly interested and fascinated with hidden things or mm -hmm. underground things and 
Um, I've been uh, visiting mines in the area where I grew up in southwestern Illinois yeah. um, that are closed and filled in with rubble. Okay. And I've been finding objects that have been left behind, I think it's trash, okay. um, that are kind of discarded cups, plates, mm -hmm. jars, uh, spoons, and bringing them back to my studio here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, paint, re, kind of painting them, presenting them as archaeological finds, as artifacts okay. of a different era, a different period mm -hmm. of my grandparents' generation, which I'm particularly interested in for my own family history. Mm -hmm. So the the recovery of the objects and bringing them back here is mm -hmm. an essential part of my practice. Right. And then once here, I'm able to kind of wash them off, the, dirt, the dirt off of yeah. them, and I also collect the coal that was mined in those mines and mm -hmm. bring them back and do paintings of those. Okay. So the paintings that we have here behind mm -hmm. us are some of those. Mm -hmm. And then tell us also about this beautiful series of drawings that you were showing me. Sure. So and these, so yeah, nice these are, are presentations of objects that I found in one particular mine called the Golden Rule Mine, which is named after the biblical <laughs> yeah. idea of the Golden Rule. It's very interesting. <laughs> um, and I thought it'd be interesting to repeat certain forms and certain objects in different mm -hmm. permutations. And okay. formally, I was really attracted to that. I was also attracted to the simplicity of showing them on a white background where yeah. you see them kind of as specimens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also liked mixing them with kind of decayed or damaged fragments mm -hmm. to kind of show the, the past that like what we were talking about before where the the uh, the artifacts are showing the the, the age then and, right. and also there's some kind of nostalgia um, tied up with that of right. kind of missing the past because part of your uh, formation and your education is on archaeology Mm -hmm. right. That's right. So, so I have a, a background in archaeology, so uh -huh. this fits in perfectly with that <laughs> right. skill set. Uh -huh. and, but also, it's a, a way for me to kind of mix those two parts of my brain yeah. together, which right. is really fun. And let's talk also a little bit about, uh, you know, because you're an educator as well, mm -hmm. and that's how we met, mm -hmm. so that's wonderful. Uh, so as far as, like, you know, finding time for your studio practice mm. and, you know, making sure that the work gets done and so right. on, which I know is a challenge for everybody, you know, oh, sure. even if you call yourself a, a full-time artist, there's still so many things that an art career takes, you know, Absolutely. you have to do the social media, you have to take care of family, you have, I mean, there's, there's so many right. distractions in everyone's life, yes. no matter how we use our time. Yes. Um, and or and there are seasons in which you know life is busy. So so kind of for you, how do you make sure that work continues to happen right. as an artist? Well, one thing uh, to go back to having your studio at home is yeah. that it makes it much easier to come in for an hour or half hour um, and schedule short bursts of time. Then, yeah, um, I prefer to work during the day. Okay. So uh, weekends are important. Yeah. For um, and I as I said earlier, where I have to kind of like mentally like shut the door, like I'm not, I'm yeah. not present in the home. I'm over here in my studio. Oh, you so, can actually close the doors. I see you can, yes, yeah, there's that actually little French doors close, you can close. And so maybe. I don't see anything out there. <laughs> yeah. And so. Or they um, just smell the, the smell of pancakes that you right. <laughs> right. I'm going to go out there for coffee and come back. <laughs> right. And uh, so I, I can, what I do is, uh -huh. essentially schedule small bursts of time yeah. when I can come in and work. Mm -hmm. um, and then vacations mm -hmm. are really important for me as work right. time where I have solid days mm -hmm. of work. Mm -hmm. uh, but as as someone with a, fu with a full-time job, yeah. um, it's important to set aside time. That's what I've right. learned of last, uh, yeah. uh, the last uh, eight years of having an artistic practice is that right. I have to schedule that time where, like you say, it doesn't happen. There's right. family stuff, friends. There's always something. Yeah. There's always something else. So um, if that time isn't scheduled on my calendar, like right. I'm in the studio, then it's hard to find time. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Amy, thank you so much for having thank us you. here in your home studio. As we close, you know, the, the question, what makes a good artist studio in your opinion? Uh, well, it's individual. It's whatever works for that person's practice. But I would say it's reserved for mm -hmm. your work. Okay. Where there's nothing else that happens there. It's, it's you can make a mess. You can yeah. leave stuff out. Um, it can be, um, it can be only yours, like um, yeah. a room of one's own, like Virginia okay. Woolf said. So it's, it's your own space. Is there one specific object that you must have in your studio? Yes. Like a precious um, thing that you have? Yes. I have uh, a little statue uh -huh. over there of um, a character okay. from um, a movie for kids called Shaun the Sheep. 
Okay. And um, Lady mm. Toddington uh-huh. is um, is kind of my my mascot because she she's a protective uh-huh. woman, so she's protecting my studio. Awesome! I love yes. that. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much for having thank us you. here. Thank you. We Thanks really enjoyed this conversation. Today. And my friends, thank you. Please share this episode with your friends. Don't miss the next uh, episodes as we continue this series of Artists in Their Studios. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.